Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. Today's video takes us to Westminster, Maryland to the Westminster Cemetery. This is a very historic cemetery that dates back to the 1700s. Uh, I'm going to walk around and see what I can find around here. We're going to start off right here. This is the grave of William Winchester. William Winchester was the founder of Westminster, Maryland. Uh, Westminster, Maryland was originally named Winchester, Maryland, but there's a Winchester in Virginia not far from here, really. And the mail was getting confused, and by mistake they were sending this town's mail to Virginia. So in order to stop that confusion, they changed the name to Westminster, Maryland. Now, William Winchester was actually born in Westminster, England, he even says on this stone, who was born in London on the 22nd of December 1710, arrived in Maryland on the 6th of March 1729. Right next to him, his wife is buried. And on the other side of his grave, there is a little marker. He was also involved with the Revolutionary War. So there you go. William Winchester, founder of Westminster, Maryland. With any cemetery that's been around since the 1700s, you're going to have graves that become lost or destroyed because of weather. And here's some examples of different graves here. So you can see this one. You can just see the letters SI on it. That's it. Nothing else. It just looks like a rock, really. And this one looks like it was... It just says DW died July 3rd, 1798. Now, with some of these older graves, they are replaced over time. I guess with families, they might, you know, replace them, descendants of these people. So, I guess that's always an option. But look right here. There are no graves right here. But I'm guessing there might have at one time been graves right here. Because this is just an open patch right here. And all these graves in this area are older graves from the 1700s and 1800s. This cemetery is uh, in the shape of a square. It's pretty much right in the town of Westminster, as you can see the older houses right there. It kind of feels like one of the cemeteries you would find in the city, like Washington, D.C., for instance. It really has that feel with the houses around it and everything. But as you can see, there is definitely some graves that have fallen over, have been knocked over, as you would expect with any old cemetery. Now, coming up right here by this tree, these are actually the graves of five Union Civil War soldiers. Right here in front of me. They each have a story, but I remember hearing that one of them was a soldier on his, either on his way to Gettysburg or leaving Gettysburg who was sick and died here in Westminster. But these are five graves of five different Union soldiers. As you can see, one of them is very clear and newer, while the other stones kind of have faded away a little bit since they have been buried right here so now we're over by the gate again and you can see there's one grave over here um, I think that's kind of weird maybe there was at one time other graves over here but right now there's just one grave here As you can see, that's the street that goes to Main Street, Westminster. And
this is just a massive cemetery. I believe there's over 7,000 burials here. If you could see just ahead of me, there's a brick church in those trees right over there. We're going to head over there next after we explore the Westminster Cemetery because there's actually a uh, burial there that has some legend behind it that I'm going to explain the story of. Alright, I'm now in the center of the cemetery. This is pretty much the top of the hill. And this is, it looks like it's a family plot. Around this circle right here. About up here we're getting some early to mid 20th century graves pretty much. People who passed away in that era. And down that way is more modern graves. As I said this is still an active cemetery. So to this day, people are still being buried here in this historic cemetery. There are literally so many graves to see around here that you just want to explore and see who's out here, but a lot of these graves are very historic. They go back hundreds of years and, and with the historic um, significance of the cemetery, you wonder how many people are have had their graves lost to time out here. There was also uh, um, when they uh, formed this cemetery in the 1700s there was a meeting house in here somewhere. I don't really know where it was but uh, it was kind of a place where like in the center I guess somewhere around here. Um, I think it burnt down though or it was demolished over time but yeah this is a really uh, neat cemetery right here you know in the town of Westminster so with that I'm making my way back around to where I started so we're gonna head over through that church I told you about that's that way across the street and we're going to take a look at the grave that's over there that um, has some legend about it, especially here in the town of Westminster, Maryland and in the county of Carroll County. So this is Westminster Cemetery. Now we're going to head next door to the church cemetery so I can tell you the legend. All right, guys, we're right across the street from the Westminster Cemetery. We're now at the Church of the Assassin here in Westminster, Maryland. And there's uh, one grave I came here to see. Uh, 
And that is the grave of Lee Masters. Now, Masters is a very legendary figure here in uh, Westminster, Maryland. This is not the original grave marker of Lee Masters, even in this cemetery. So let me explain the story a little bit about him. So he was born in England. He came in 1717. In 1730, he inherited his father's assets. So in England, he ran a uh, iron furnace company and had some success there, but eventually he had to flee England. And he came to America to try to, st to, try to start off new and uh, he came to Maryland. Unfortunately, when he came, it was really close to the time that the Revolutionary War started. So because of that, eventually, uh, he did have to flee Maryland because he feared for his business and for himself. So when he came to Maryland, he started a iron furnace company just like he had in England. And uh, when the Revolutionary War broke out, he pretty much, because he was from England and he probably had uh, more English views on the war. He decided he needed to get out of America for a while so, to at least, you know, keep his business from being burnt down by some angry people or possibly even being killed or something like that. So he uh, he fled to the Caribbean. So when he came back, he realized his business was in poor shape and uh, he pretty much spent the rest of his life, you know, building it back up and just, just doing his thing. And he died in uh, 1796. Now, you say that's just a normal, normal life of someone who came to America, right? Well, the legend starts with his ghost. So many people claim they see his ghost on New Winslow Road, which is not far from town. And many people claim to see the ghost of League Masters. Um, he was originally buried when he died at his house. At the, it was called Furnace Hill at the time. That's where he had his, his company, his iron furnace company. But um, the people who bought the place after him, they were doing some mining, I guess, underground and stuff. And his bones kept, as they claim, coming to the surface. So eventually the owner, the new owner of the property, just took the bones and kept them. And about 50 years after he died, he was moved here to Westminster, to the cemetery right here. Now the original grave marker as I said on the grave was replaced a few years ago it had some cracks in it and it was starting to fade so they replaced it with this grave marker as you can see now League Masters the other legend about him is that he uh, he did have slave labor at his iron furnace company and the other legend is that he was very cruel to his slaves <laughs> and one of the stories are legends because it really doesn't have a lot of facts behind it other than just being spread around is that he had a slave named Sam and that Sam made him mad one night for whatever reason some people say Sam had a wife and Lee Masters was either cruel to his wife or tried to uh, make advances on his wife and that angered Sam and whatever happened though the legend goes that Lee Masters took Sam and threw him in the iron furnace and closed it up and burnt him alive the legend also says that Lee also did that to uh, a woman and child, possibly Sam's wife and kid, because in 1930 there was a kitchen fire at his original house, and when they renovated it, behind a wall they found a iron furnace brick room, and they found two skeletal remains in that house. So Lee Masters is a very uh, strong legend here in Westminster, Maryland and in Carroll County. Um, I actually work less night shift at a place that's less than a half mile from League Master's original house. His ghost is said to walk the road at night. I've never seen him, but every time I drive by going to work, I look over at it and just kind of think that's where League Master's lived. And the house is privately owned today, so you can't just walk up to it and videotape around, but it's kind of cool to know that history. So that's the legend of League Masters. So today we explored the Westminster Cemetery and the legend of League Masters.
So that will be it for today's video, guys. Thanks, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe. Until next time, it's Fixed Image. Same piece.